and welcome. You may notice I am not in my usual place. I'm actually in Chicago um, visiting my dad and uh, I do not have total control over my environment. So please forgive any extraneous noises that I hope will not disturb us. Um, more than once this week, I had the lovely experience of noticing a tree, a bare tree covered with ice. What made the experience so lovely and precipitated my noticing the tree in the first place was that the sun was shining on the tree and made it come alive with the radiant beauty of glistening ice that gave it an absolutely magical aura. More than once, I was caught up short by the sight in various parts of Shaker Heights, actually, and each time I was thrilled by the way the angle of the sun's rays illuminated the ice-covered branches. Maybe some of you had the same experience. Almost simultaneously with my observation, I heard another informal observation that this winter in Cleveland has been unusually sunny. I have found that to be true. We have had some brilliantly sunny days, which, because they coincided with some very cold days, made the cold less bitter and the winter more pleasant. While I am delighted to experience the first hints that spring is coming, particularly on some wonderfully balmy days, I am grateful to avoid the Cleveland grays as much as possible. The world seems to have an endless supply of gray news and gray prognostications. So the sunniness of the of nature is a welcome relief. With that thought, let us pause for our first break to breathe with the um, image of glistening trees. And possibly for some of you of the balminess of the days just, just this last weekend um, that told us spring is on the way. So let us find our comfortable positions with our feet either on the floor or as close to the floor as we can um, get them. And then to um, be attentive, but also with some ease, let us take our internal inventory and try to let go of all the stresses, the strains, the uncomfortabilities, the pains even, that visit every single body on this earth. Whatever may be today's test, let us see if we can either relax into it or let it go for a moment, if that is possible but starting from the tips of our heads, we release the scalps that hold our hair in place, our ears, and you might want to wiggle them from outside if you're not by nature a, an ear wiggler, which I am not. Let us release our jaws, oh, our tongues, the lips that sometimes we are holding tightly. Our necks, shoulders, upper arms, forearms, our hands, we can give them a little bit of a shake, 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 and then and let them rest comfortably in our laps. Let's go inside our digestive tracts are particularly prone to stress and to strain. And let us release our lungs, our tummies, our waists, our upper legs, our lower legs, our feet again. 
it's, it just feels good to wiggle our toes. Pretend we're digging them into sand. What a nice image. And then let us take a big, deep healing breath. And enjoy it as it fills us up from top to bottom. And when we can hold it no longer, let us release it. And linger also with the out breath. We inhale its healing properties, its healing presence. All that exists right at this moment is the breath. We are not reduced, but we are just breath in existence. We are simplified. We are just breath going in and going out. Coming in and going out again. That's all there is, just the breath. And if it is helpful to have an image, either of the sun shining and the snow melting, or the sun shining and the branches glistening, or whatever is in your experience right now. You might just breathe that in, its beauty, its comfort, its hope. And then let us release and let it go, let everything go. We are all breath, pure existence. Simplified to the most basic activity of our days. The activity that never stops. Thank God. Even with the good news of COVID cases decreasing, there remains an unease for many, a timidity to engage socially, to resume certain activities, to go back full time to the office. Our adjustments continue as the world seems determined to hurl itself back into restriction-free life. While we know that our lives have been unalterably changed, there is no lack of instructions as to the best way to resume our former lives, most of which suggest we take small steps and respect our own internal needs and timetables. In a recent article entitled, There Will Be No Post-COVID, Charles Blau asserts, COVID has made us reconsider everything, the meaning of home and work, the value of public space, the magnitude and immediacy of death, what it truly means to be a member 
of society. We are still finding the answers to those questions, but the America we knew ended in 2019. This is a new one, scarred, struggling to its feet, dogged by moral and philosophical questions that on the one hand have revealed its cruelty and on the other have forced it into metamorphosis. This is just one person's view, but it certainly gives us a lens through which to understand the currents we daily observe or feel in our own insides, in our own lives. We are also witnessing a time when many have decided that they will not return to their previous lives at all. I have watched this development with awe and with wonderment, awe that so many have determined to press the pause button and reevaluate their work and their working conditions. Wonderment that so many have done so without knowing how they will support themselves and their families or what their next step might be. The contrasts and complexities of this time are remarkable. For two years, all we could think about was returning to our lives as they were pre-COVID now we are finding that we are in the middle of the great transformation, the great resignation, and the great polarization, all of which mean that we may be going to the movies again, eating in restaurants, and gathering with family and friends. But our world has changed in fundamental ways because of this pandemic and all it has uncovered. I suspect that many of us sense changes in ourselves, our attitudes, our expectations, our thoughts and feelings. Other changes may appear across the street, across the country, or across the world, but they will emerge and we will find ways to accommodate our new reality. As I was thinking about these issues and considering the news from many quarters this week, a colleague of mine shared a story that I believe has something to say to us. It seems to be a folktale, as it is not attributed to an author. This is it. Once there were two men who were given exactly the same fruit, but the first had two bowls, while the second had only one. The man with the two bowls divided his food putting the bitter in one bowl and the sweet in the other. When he would eat, he would make a great show of his pleasure over the sweetness of the one bowl, and he would grimace over the bitterness of the other and place it aside, deeming it too unpleasant to bear. The man with one bowl had no choice but to mix the bitter and the sweet together. As time passed, the first man grew thinner and gradually wasted away. The second man, who had been given exactly the same food, grew healthier and stronger. In desperation, the first man asked the second to tell him the secret of his vitality. The second replied, you, having two bowls, divided the bitter from the sweet. You discarded the bitter because of its taste, however. The sweetness alone could not sustain you. I, on the other hand, having only one bowl, mixed the bitter and the sweet together. In this way, the food nourished me, and the taste of the sweet tempered the flavor of the bitter. And so the first man smashed one of his bowls and soon became whole again. We, too, must find a way to be whole to live with a proper balance between loss and happiness, between hurt and joy. Excuse me. Our memories of life's disappointments 
of the sadness we have experienced cannot, of course, be forgotten. Our challenge is to keep those memories from paralyzing us, from embittering our lives and creating barriers between us and those we love. Instead, our own painful memories can help us draw nearer to others, teaching us compassion and empathy, sensitivity and kindness, and the blessings that are a part of our life, the moments of celebration, the occasions of good fortune. These memories challenge us as well to avoid the self-satisfaction and complacency that so frequently accompanies success and strive to live with appreciation and gratitude. I recognize that such advice and well-meaning instruction is aspirational and can feel somewhat oppressive in its well-intentioned balance and equanimity. Interestingly, however, it is an approach that is echoed in the Talmud, where the rabbis advance a principle of gamze ya'avor, which means this too shall pass, which they apply to situations both positive and negative. In other words, when we are confronted with difficult, destructive, and even, dis I'm sorry, distressing and even destructive situations, we might comfort ourselves with the thought that this will pass. It will not last forever. By the same token, when we are blessed with good fortune, lest we become complacent, our tradition warns us, gamze ya'avor, this too will pass. It is an approach that encourages us, as the story does, to see life in its totality as the sum and substance of all of our experiences. We may want to wish away the hard times, but knowing that this is not possible, our tradition encourages us to understand such circumstances as part of a continuum of experience. So let us breathe. Let us breathe in the reality of this particular moment. It may be positive. It may be negative. It may have a bit of both in it. But that is where we are right now. Wishing that we were moments ago or yesterday or the, a week ago doesn't get us anywhere. Wanting it to be tomorrow, next week, next month, can be helpful, but that's not where we are right now. Right now, we are living this moment. So let us breathe it in. Whatever it is, whatever it holds for us, let us reassume our meditative postures and breathe. The reality that this moment is for each of us, and that will be different for each of us. And perhaps, if this is a difficult moment, just the act of breathing in and out will hold comfort for us. Just the knowledge that we are still here, we are still breathing. Painful as that sometimes is, and I know there are times when even the act of taking a breath makes you wish you were in someone else's body. It means we are here. We are sustaining whatever it is that has evolved. And we will move forward into the next breath and the breath after that. I was once um, taken by the attitude of a woman whose husband had been in a very bad accident. 
not his fault. In fact, he was hit by a car when he was crossing legally a street. And she said, characteristically for her, but so wonderfully, he is in so much pain, he must be alive. Something to that effect. I found that such a wonderful attitude. Sometimes even the intensity of the pain reminds us that we are alive. And if we are alive, we might be able to say to ourselves, this too will pass. We just have to keep breathing through it. And perhaps we can take a little bit of pleasure in that fullness just because we've practiced it. That's why practice is so important. By way of conclusion of prayer and promise, as it was intended by its composer, Naomi Shemer, I can't help but share with you one of her very beautiful songs. It is entitled, I'll Call Ayla, and it goes like this. with you a translation. It works a bit with the music, but I think it's easier to understand just spoken. Every bee that brings the honey needs a sting to be complete. And we all must learn to taste the bitter with the sweet. Keep, O oh Lord, the fire burning through the night and through the day for the person who is returning from so far away. Don't uproot what has been planted, so our bounty, bounty may increase. Let our dearest, dearest wish be granted. Bring us peace, oh bring us peace. For the sake of all these things, Lord, let your mercy be complete. Bless the sting and bless the honey, bless the, bless the bitter and the sweet. Save the houses that we live in, the small fences and the wall. From the sudden warlike thunder, may you save them all. Guard what little I've been given, guard the hill my child might climb, that the fruit that's yet to ripen not be plucked 
before its time. As the wind makes, not, makes rustling night sounds and a star falls in its arc on my dreams and my desires from crystal shapes out of the dark. Guard for me, O oh Lord, these treasures. All my friends keep safe and strong. Guard the stillness, guard the weeping, and above all, guard this song. And then once in English, Don't what has been granted, so our bones may increase. Let our dearest wish be granted. We must peace, oh, bring us peace for the sake of all these things, Lord. Let your mercy be complete. Bless the sting and bless the honey. Bless the bitter and the sweet. May your week ahead, as it must be one of bitter and of sweet, be more of sweet than of bitterness. And may you accept it all with a sense that Gamzeya Avor, this true will pass. Let us find strength and comfort in those thoughts and in our tradition that shares with us daily that wisdom. God bless. See you next time.